welcome to a spooky edition of Risty's Guides. Now, I hope you all know your werewolves from your poltergeists, because this week I'll be delving into the scary world of London's most haunted hotspots. If I was a no-good common thief in the 16th century, frigged up on opium and getting my jollies on from raping prostitutes, this is the last place I want to find myself. Yup, you guessed it, Tower of London. Grim, grey and gruesome, the Tower of London has dominated the London landscape and the pages of history since its construction by William the Conqueror in 1078, and today it is, perhaps, the most haunted building in England. You wouldn't get out of there. One of the most frequent ghost sightings here is that of Anne Boleyn, Henry VIII's second wife. It's been said that Big Henry got truly ticked off with her rule breaking and bad language. And after putting up with her French profanity for too long in my opinion, he gave her the job. So come on, let's take a look around and see if we can't smoke out this headless foul mouthed hussy. Not in there. Something up in that window up there. Is it? There's a curtain twitching. Guys, guys, get, get the lights on. Get the lights on. Up there. Shine them up there. I see a, I see a curtain twitching. There's definitely something up there. I saw something. I saw a figure. I, saw, I definitely saw a figure. Alright guys, I'm a bit worried. I think we should just go. I mean, I think, you know, I think we've been here too long. We've outstayed our welcome. Maybe there were some things man was not meant to know. I've just been on the phone to Derek Akora. He told me to get down to 50 Barclay Square. There's been some strange happenings. 50 Barclay Square is one of the most haunted addresses in London. The stories are legendary. As a result of its dreadful reputation, no tenant could be found who was willing to take on the lease of the house in Barclay Square, and for many years it remained empty. But its otherworldly inhabitants continued to be active. Strange lights that flashed in the windows would startle passers-by. Disembodied screams were heard echoing from the depths of the building. And spookier still, the sound of a heavy body was heard being dragged down the staircase. As I make my way through St James's Park, it's important to stop and reflect on the many human lives that were lost during the Great Plague. Men as young as two years old would have been hanged from that tree there. The London Eye was originally used to dunk witches in the Thames. One night, two sailors on shore leave in London were seeking a place to stay and chanced upon the obviously empty house. Breaking in, they made their way upstairs and inadvertently settled down to spend the night in the haunted room. They were woken by the sound of heavy, determined footsteps coming up the stairs. Suddenly, the door banged open and a hideous, shapeless, oozing mass began to fill the room. One sailor managed to get past it and escape. Returning to the house of the policeman, he found his friend's corpse impaled on the railings outside, the twisted face and bulging eyes grim testimony to the terror that had caused him to jump to his death, rather than confront the evil in the room above. Welcome to 50 Barclay Square. Prime Minister George Canning lived here until his death in 1827. In 1907, a Mr Dupree shut his lunatic brother in one of the attics. The captive was so violent, he could only be fed through a hole in the wall. His cries and groans could be heard echoing throughout the neighbouring houses. Well, I've had a lovely evening and I hope I've shed some light on the mysteries of haunted London. But I better get off because I can feel a ghost coming. The Tick Tock of Time. As night becomes morning.